Great to have you back here on The Breakfast uh, this morning. And now let's go in, well, way back in history to the year 1995, actually, the 22nd of June. Um, I think earlier in the day we had spoken about 1996, uh, the uh, Olympics. Uh, but on this day, 1995, uh, about 40 army officers were arrested and charged with a coup by former, um, of course, military head of state, uh, Sani Abachan. One of those people was Olusegun Obasanjo and, uh, of course, his deputy, Shehu uh, Yaradua. Uh, Obasanjo eventually was released, uh, as you all know, in 1998, I believe, after Abacha um, had passed. But it was on this day he was arrested and secretly tried with about 50 others. Forty of them were convicted. The trials were condemned by governments and human rights organizations. And critics say that there was actually no coup plot. Um, at this time, he was sentenced to 30 years in prison. Um, it was eventually changed or reduced to 15 years in prison. And then, of course, uh, he was uh, let um, or set free by Abdul Salam Abubakar uh, in uh, 1998. Uh, of course, be, then became president in 1999. But um, the uh, conspiracy theories about this, you know, are that uh, Sani Abacha at that time was trying to ensure that there was no dissenting or no army officer that was, you know, on, uh, you know any high-ranking officer generally that could challenge his government or uh, could maybe also, um, you know, um, uh, set up a coup against him. And so he challenged um, and charged all these officers with a coup and sentenced all of them to prison. Um, of course, sentenced some of them to, you know, to death. Some people, of course, lost their lives as a result of this. Uh, some of them were executed. But Obasanjo was one of those who was sentenced to about 30 years in jail and eventually made it alive and became president. Um, it, it's pretty much, you know, like, um, you know, clockwork. You know, when you come in by a coup, uh, you then have to ensure that nobody can topple your government by the same coup. And so what you do is you break all the wings, you know, you shut all the doors, you, you know, push the ladder down so nobody can climb up to that level. Um, um, and, of course, um, you know, carry out a coup against you. It's happened many, many other times in the past in different countries, um, uh, some, um, you know, similar um, yes. um, occasions like this. Yes, on, on this day in history, um, going back to this time, the news headlines <coughs> then saw 40 sentence in Nigerian coup plot trial, you know, Oh, Olusha Gobasanjo as well, you know, he had been arrested from his home. And during that period, you know that um, the 1993 June 12 election mm -hmm. um, had been held and had been annulled, the, the, um, the election results had been annulled. And because of that, the military government took over and began to arrest, harass people who were opposed to the government. Lots of arrests at that time. You know, newspaper articles at that time would say, write to the government, this is what you can do. As to the trial of Kent, because Kentarewa was also in prison at that time and so many other activists, you know, of Ogoni land. So, you know, there were newspaper editors saying, write to the government, ask that Kentarewa's trial be open, ask that Olusha Gobasanjo be released. So lots of agitation then. So. Um, Obasanjo was one of the people who was arrested, and uh, the good thing is it was a typical grass to grace story. He eventually became president of the country, um, released. I think he was sentenced to many years, it but was he, thirty years. Yes, and about thirty years, it but it got off in just about two, three. Um, from ninety five to ninety, yeah, about three years. Yes, about three years. So that's um, what happened. This there's a, there's a lot of people who, um, well, unfortunately for the Ogoni Nine, uh, there's you know also a couple of people who survived. Sanya Bacha's um, era survived in the sense that they got out after he died. So if he didn't die, there's a lot of these persons that we probably see in government today or that, you know, we've seen, you know, over time that maybe wouldn't have survived past 1999. Um, Oladipo Dia is one of those people who I, I believe was also in, in, in jail at that time. Um, or also was also accused of a coup, you know, planning a coup to topple Sanya Bacha's government. Um, Obasanjo is also one of those people. Um, Abiola, unfortunately, did make it out of jail, but, you know, didn't make it to that become president. And, so uh, you know, there is uh, those who say that, you know, the Yorubas were compensated, you know, for Abiola's death by making um, Obasanjo president eventually in 1999. So, um, the celebration for the celebration was different for each person, for each family, for Nigerians, um, or the reaction rather uh, to Sanya Bacha's death. Not celebration, not the reaction. Well, it was celebration for for people. <laughs>
<laughs> the reaction to how much as death was different for different people. For a lot of Nigerians, it was, okay, finally, we no longer have, you know, a dictator. And then there was those who say, finally, my daddy's going to come home. I remember I spoke with uh, Frederick Fasson's son, who also, you know, said the same thing, that after Abacha died, you know, they were shocked when eventually their father was released. It came like a dream. To, they never expected things to turn out that way. And so I'm sure it's pretty much the same thing with um, uh, Diaz's family, pretty much the same thing with Abbasanjo's family um, after Senator Abacha died. All right, so I'm going back to the year 1377. It's a bit of a historical story here when a 10-year-old boy became, became king. A 10-year-old. I think the last time we saw this was in the Bible, when a 10-year-old became king. Uh, I've seen teenagers become king in Delta State and uh, you know, somewhere. In, oh, uh, wow. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> and did they let them rule? Because no, no, no. You're, so you're only, yeah, you're only just uncle, made king. Exactly. Yes, His yes. uncle, Richard, and John enough. of Gaunt. His, there was a chief council, you know, so he is king. It almost seems like a ceremonial thing, yep. but obviously he doesn't take all the decisions. He has uncles, relatives, and the whole cabinet who makes those decisions yep. for him. So that's what happened this day in history, 1377. A 10-year-old boy, uh, Richard II of England, began his reign. You know, he uh, was coronated on this day in history, and that's because his grandfather, Edward III, you know, passed on. You know, this period when Richard II became king was a very, very trying period in England because there were lots of challenges. You know, there was the Peasants' Revolt, there was the um, hundred, 100 Days' War. There was just a lot of challenges, you know, f wars here and there, agitation from the poor people, people who were dissatisfied with a lot of things going on in the country. There was religious crisis as well. But he really did play a central role in suppressing those crises. But we know that a group of um, aristocrats took control of government in 1387, but Richard II regained control of power in 1389. Uh, but the thing is, you know, all these wars I told you about that happened, you know, in history, people, you know, regarded him as a tyrant, right? So his rule from 1377 to 1399 has been described by historians as Richard's tyranny. Yep. basically. So he was deposed in 1399 and he started to have, you know, starved to death in captivity. There's lots of books written about Richard's tyranny, especially William Shakespeare, the popular writer. Uh, he portrayed Richard II's mistral and deposition in, um, in, in some of his plays. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, um, long, 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 long time ago, none of us here was alive at that time. Um, but it's a good thing that, you know, we're able to, you know, oh, well, you know, the world is able to, you know, keep uh, history books. And we hope that we learn from some of, some yes. of all these And, and uh, I think it's, it's still valid today because we're talking about a 10-year-old boy who became king in 1377. And this thing, history here in Nigeria, we're talking about youth participation in politics, agitating for the young people to get a seat on the table when it comes to decision making. You know, but these are countries that, they, of course, they've gone way, way, way ahead of us. You've seen younger people in younger climes like um, Emmanuel Macron of France and many other young people assuming, you know, positions of leadership. So it's one of the things we'll talk about later on in the breakfast. How ready are the youth to, you know, assume leadership positions beyond protesting in the streets, beyond hiding behind keypads key on social media? Are we ready to actually take up a mantle of leadership um, later on in the breakfast? <laughs> 